feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp. And welcome to the Shrimp Tank at the Shrimp Tank Studios right down here in downtown Alfred outside of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm your host, Ted Jenkins, sitting here with my co-host, Lee Heisman, today. And this really on the Shrimp Tank, what do we do? This is where we teach entrepreneurs across America. We give you your MBA in entrepreneurship from other successful entrepreneurs because let's face it, it's not just about book smarts. It's a lot about street smarts. And that's where the divider collides right here on the show on the Shrimp Tank. And we get to interview some of the brightest and best CEOs in and around the country. It's crazy. The shrimp tank is taking off all over in major cities like Tulsa and Houston and Boca Raton, and Orange County, California, Houston, Seattle, and many, many more places. And I'll tell you what, I'm so excited, Lee, that entrepreneurship is at an all-time high in America. I recently read an article here that right now amongst Gen Xers, 55% of them in the next three years see themselves being an entrepreneur. I didn't say they'll be successful. And 75% of millennials in the next five years see themselves quitting their jobs and either starting to become a freelancer or getting into entrepreneurship. So it's crazy, crazy stuff today. Well, you know, Ted, over at uh, KSU, and we, we, uh, one of our other co-hosts is Chris Hanks, the executive director and founder of the KSU Entrepreneurship Center. We are the first school in the state of Georgia with a degree in entrepreneurship. What's so wonderful about the tank and in the other cities that we're in, in Houston, we're connected with Sam State University, in Boca Raton, uh, FAU, Florida Atlantic, which all have degrees in entrepreneurship. And what we teach the students is mindset. It's not so much about owning a business. You don't have to be a business owner to be an entrepreneur. They really teach the entrepreneurial mindset, Ted. You know what that is. That's taking ownership of what you want, being responsible, and wherever you work within a company or owning a company, that's where you're going to utilize those skills. Well, we're excited, folks, today. And just a minute, we're going to bring in our guest today, Tony Horton, who is the popular creator of the best-selling fitness series. You all know P90X, but we learned a lot of things in our research that Tony knows, but we don't know yet, and we're going to find out here on the uh, Shrimp Tank. i tell you what, he's got great lighting today. I like that. Uh, um, but uh, I'll tell you what, at Kennesaw State, for folks that don't know about this and don't know what's going on, this is the trend that's happening in college and universities across America. And what we tie with the Shrimp Tank and our way to give back to the community is that the future of tomorrow is built on the backs of entrepreneurs. These are the people that are creating the jobs. It's not the big companies. It's a small guy out there that takes the risk, whether it's financially or emotionally, and starts that business and creates it and creates those jobs. And, Lee, right now with Kennesaw State, I understand that we're getting towards the tail end of the Kennesaw State 100, where one of these kids is going to win a hundred thousand dollars to start their business is that, that is true? correct this is yeah this is the third year ted we have run the ksu 100 and this is the third year in a row there's 100 students that present their business ideas yeah. they get dropped down to 50 down to 20 down to the final three and the winner each year gets a hundred thousand dollars it's a combination of equity stock and cash right. do the other 97 business. work at starbucks is that how it works i just three, got a latte three, this the money morning. i saw one this morning i got a free latte you did? Because I knew one of the students. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, after I heard some of those pitches, about 94 of them should be working at Starbucks, and then they'll, <laughs> they'll learn something else there. It's amazing stuff. But the kids are doing fantastic, and it's great. And I had to tell you, just for parents in the local area here in Atlanta, you ought to check out the program at Kennesaw State. I mean, this is sort of the future. Your kid can get a degree in poli-sci or in communications, or they can get a degree in entrepreneurship. And whether they work for themselves or they become an entrepreneur within a big company or an intrapreneur, they're going to need those entrepreneurial skills to survive and grow and not only be a better person, but this is ultimately how you become financially successful. You can hear a replay of all of our broadcasts, as always, at ShrimpTankPodcast.com or download us on iTunes. You can download us at the Google Play Store or SoundCloud and on YouTube. We've got hundreds of videos of just some of the most amazing entrepreneurs and their success stories. And today, um, not just an amazing uh, entrepreneur, but just the story in reading the background on Tony Horton, we're so excited to be able to interview him today and not only talk about his business, but unlike many shows, we have a plead the fifth section that we're going to get to do at the end of this. I know, right? The plead the fifth section. I know Tony seems very concerned about that, Lee, but, but not very concerned at all. Uh, but I wanted to uh, ask you just to start off today that I saw a quote in the many interviews that you've done over time. And I thought it was a great quote where it said, you can train with the hope that your ego will be satisfied with your physical appearance in a mirror 90 days from now, or you can train to improve today. And I'm, you know, I'm sure you've talked about this before, but I'm wondering just where did the, the genesis come for you to basically say, I'm going to start personal training and then to create what arguably is the single most successful fitness series product that ever existed? 
Well, first of all, uh, uh, Ted and Lee, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, having had a certain amount of success in my field and uh, and being an entrepreneur, um, I think I might have a thing or two to say to, yeah, to yeah. your audience today. <laughs> <clears throat> but, you know, um, fitness for me was, uh, uh, you know, a kind of a funky journey. I was not a great athlete as a kid. Um, you know, my dad was, I wasn't. I just, uh, I wanted to be. I just didn't have the right coaches and mentors and and teachers that kind of could work with me and my and my uh, uh, my two left feet and my bad hand eye coordination. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I moved out to California in 1980, and the lifestyle was very different here than it was back on the East Coast when I grew up in Connecticut, Rhode Island. I mean, you know, back there it was football, basketball, baseball, hockey. You know, there was no slack lining. There was no ninja courses. There was no CrossFit. <laughs> there was no Pilates. There was no yoga. There wasn't really a whole lot of martial arts. But it was just, you know, those four major sports, and I was pretty horrible at all four of them. And I was an okay skier, an okay, okay tennis player. I just didn't know the – I didn't know the, that it required you to do certain types of exercises throughout the week so that you could upgrade your skill level when it came to those sports. You know, I figured if you were just good at it, you were good at it. And if you weren't, you weren't. And, you know, back in high school and stuff, a lot of kids were naturally talented athletes. They were pushed maybe by their parents more. Um, and I just wasn't. So, um, you know, it was, a, it was an interesting transformation for me. When I got out here, I, you know, I ran into anybody and everybody. And, I, I, you know, there were gyms in every corner. That didn't exist on the East Coast. They were only at the – at the campus or at the high school level or something. And, um, you know, I just fell in love with it. You know, I mean, it's sunny out here 325 days out of the year. So people are outside playing volleyball and, and, you know, the local mountains are nearby so I could ski in the morning and surf in the afternoon. So I just kind of fell in love with it and, you know, it helped build my confidence. I was a young actor and a comedian or attempted attempt at trying to be funny. At the time. <laughs> it's hard. Funny's hard. And, um, <laughs> And it just, you know, I, you know, I mean, it, what I was discovering early on, uh, and that has to do, come back to what, that quote was, you know, early when I was younger and I was single, I was, tra I was training for, you know, f for aesthetic purposes and I was doing it for my ego. And I didn't understand that if I, you know, that if I work out today, I train today, then I'm, you know, I'm upping my norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, brain derived neurotropic factor things inside my temporal lobe. You know, there's actual chemical shifts that, that it result as a result of, uh, of just moving my butt, you know, whether I was lifting weights or going for a run or doing a yoga class. And I knew that when I was exercising, I was more productive. I was procrastinating less. I was following through with things where I normally wouldn't have. Uh, and when I didn't exercise, I was um, moody. You're you know right, what yeah, I mean? We know that feeling. And, <laughs> right? And and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be 60 in about a month. And oh, um, I don't know what that, well, it's the lighting, fellas. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, I really do feel pretty amazing. I, I, you know, I don't, I mean, I, there's a lot of things that I can physically do, um, now at almost 60 that I couldn't do in my forties, thirties, and even my twenties. And I just have a better attitude, you know, and that's the reason why I exercise because I just feel better when I train today. I feel better today. I'm more productive today. You know, I sleep better. I have a tendency to, uh, be more creative and, and thoughtful and patient. And, uh, there's a lot of things that come with it other than the fact that you're just going to look good in the future. And that's, a, that's, a uh, uh, an amorphous, unpredictable um, a, a way to train. I don't. I just. I train because I'm better, and it happens. You know, the minute the workout's over, and it shows, Tony. It absolutely shows. Oh yeah, in everything. Lee you know, trains like crazy. He's he's insane. He's got Heisman Fitness in his basement. I mean, this uh, thing. We a, work hard. Thanks. It's like so a four car garage fit, fitness center. I'm proud of him. Wow. Today, we, we work every day, kind of very similar to yourself. Coming up on 47, Tony. It's like you said. You know, you get younger, and as the more you work out, no question. But about Tony it. looks a lot. Well, better. you, you know, look marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that darling. Like you look marvelous. marvelous. <laughs> very Bill, Billy Crystal of you. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Billy Crystal, good <laughs> reference. And you know what's it's nice. We talk to millennials all day, so none of them get the references that Ted and I do. So thank you I know. for being all, all in our realm. All my stuff is from the 60s and 70s. 100%. <laughs> Head scratching. What is he talking about? Well, you know, speaking of millennials, what we teach a lot at the universities uh, and what we promote through entrepreneurship with the new students and what we hear a lot from them is a lot of them are not looking for dollars. You hear in there, we hear a lot from students. They, they want to make a significant change. They want to make an impact on people. And, Tony, your first answer, it, it, wonderful. Of course, it makes complete sense why you do what you do. But in addition to that, with, with all of the products that you've sold, the impact you're making on your clients. I know the impact you've made on yourself, as you've discussed, but how does it make you feel with what you're doing for the individual clients you work with as well as many of the people that purchased your program? Oh, man, you know, you wonder about what, what my purpose is. My purpose is to help other people find theirs, you know, and I'm constantly running into folks from all around the world 
um, who have, you know, because when you're in your lair, right, and you're making your thing and, you know, you've got your, 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 you're trying to figure out, well, what's the combination? What's the sequence? What types of exercises? You know, how intense should I make it? What do the modifiers look like? And, you know, you're there with your team and you're kind of creating this thing based on, you know, what you know at this stage of your life. And, you know, a lot of it had to do with when I was training a lot of my celebrities. You know, I had Billy Idol and Bruce Springsteen and Tom Petty and Sean Connery. <laughs> Submarines don't react well to bullets. Anyway, um, <laughs> You know, and Ewan McGregor and Allison Janney, who just won a, a, an Oscar. So I had, you know, I had, there was a lot of pressure on me early in my career to kind of create f formulas and techniques and methods for these folks. So they got results because their management and their agents and the, and the, and the studios and whatnot were very concerned that, you know, that they were going to get the results they needed to get to be able to perform on stage or look the right way in a movie. And so I took all of that, you know, all the nuances of dealing with, you know, that kind of that kind of celebrity type, and I just put it in my stuff, um, and I, you know, I put, I added humor. I, there was no such thing as humor in in extreme fitness; it just didn't exist. Uh, but you know, everybody knows that exercise is not a, you know, it's not a picnic. You know, eating right is, it requires a lot of discipline. So I just tried to make it as palatable for as many people as possible. And so, fortunately, we sold millions and millions of copies of all of it. And so, when you run into folks, you know, I'm in the pharmacy, you know, just, you know sitting there and a girl comes in so screaming and yelling and jumping up and down and spinning. Look what you did. I go, what is your name? What did I do? I hope I don't get arrested. You know, what happened? And, and, uh, and you know, I've been to 57 military bases, maybe close to 60 now around the world from oh, Kosovo awesome. to South Korea. I've been to Japan twice. I've been done Haven't tons of domestic. The Pentagon? The Pentagon. But I've, yeah, I've taught classes in the Pentagon three times. Apparently, I'm the only non-employee that's been able to do that. It's just because, I've, you know, it's had a tremendous influence because the thing works. I mean, if you look at P90X, for example, the thing that really kind of uh, help me break out. I mean, it's 90 days. It's their workouts are an hour typically. And if you do the ab ripper, they're an hour and 15. I mean, you know, it's very difficult for folks to find the time and energy to be able to commit to something like that. But the few that did the millions that did got results they had never seen before. Right. So uh, obviously the level of enthusiasm when you meet folks is just because you're not just changing them physically. It's a mental and emotional shift. You, you're, you're allowing people to live larger based on the fact that they have this, this power and the strength and the speed and the balance and the flexibility they've never had in their life, whether they're in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, or 60s. You know, I was at an event in, in uh, Minnesota with this guy who got on the stage. He was 66 years old. And, you know, he told everybody his story. And, you know, he is the antithesis of what he was in his 20s and 30s. And he's in his 60s. So the elation that comes from that kind of massive transformation is just awesome to be part of. You know, Tony, I'm uh, so impressed most over everything is the marketing and how you're able to market this product. Because I know as a kid and even today, I think I've seen probably 47 different ad machine uh, infomercials on TV. The ad, you know, I, I can't, there have been so many that must be, you know, places that people hang their clothes on in their basement now that just sit there as a little machine. And the fact in such a cluttered space you know, that you were able to sell so much of P90X and the other products that you're selling today. How did you, how did you come up with the marketing plan for the entrepreneurs that are listening? Or how did you really decide to sort of declutter the product from all the other fitness products that are out there that would help you um, improve yourself? Well, you know, I powwowed quite a bit. The cool thing is that the, the CEO of Beachbody, the company that distributes my stuff, yeah. Um, you know, he, he understood the power of, of truth and honesty and authenticity. And it was up to really, I mean, it wasn't, I didn't do the marketing you know, I was the creative guy that, that, uh, that, that created the sequences and the workouts. I mean, you know, no one had ever done 12 different workouts. If you look at P90X with Pilates and yoga and resistance and cardio and martial arts and proprioception and, and all the different aspects of it, you know, most programs at that point were you know, filled with pretty people who looked amazing, who didn't sweat, who were all doing basically the same one or two things, okay. just boxing, just Pilates, just yoga, just bodybuilding. And I put all of it in there because I was able to convince um, uh, our CEO and our, and our VPs over there at Beachbody that if, they, if, if our customers were, were gonna get results, they needed to work on their weaknesses as much as their strengths. And so people naturally gravitate to things that they can kind of sort of do or are interested in. Um, as opposed to things that are difficult and hard and new, you know? So uh, when you jam it all in one program and you follow the sequence in the proper order, you're forced to work on, on and do things you've never done before. And so initially when we marketed the P90X, for example, along with P90X2, X3, 22 minute hardcore, regardless of the program, 
you know, we were relying on our test groups, you know, the people that we that would volunteer from around the city who would, uh, you know, uh, respond to ads. And we would put them in, you know, these very controlled environments where I am there training them every day and we were feeding them too. We are not allowed to go to restaurants or prepare their old meals. And so under those conditions, you know, the chances of them eating, uh, getting great results are, are very high. But the average person doesn't have that situation. They're not in a controlled environment. They're just, you know, oh, look, I'm in, there's McDonald's and I'm starving. I'm gonna get a double, you know, a couple Big Macs and some fries and, a, and, right. a, and an apple pie because I, I trained hard this morning, so I deserve this kind of reward. And um, and so initially, you know, with the test groups and we use that footage, you know, those before and afters, and we got moderate response from people. But, you know, if you look at, at uh, Power 90, which came before P90X, this was the advent of the internet and people having their own video cameras and whatnot. So they started su submitting their before and after pictures without even us asking for them. And they started, you know, shooting their own little home movies about their experience. So we pulled all the, all the early test group photos and videos and we just started adding people's people's stuff that was, that was being sent to us. So the average person at home going, hey man, that doesn't look overly produced. Right. That lighting is horrible. <laughs> Those people are stuttering, but that is, that's like my uncle, that's my dentist, you know, there's, that's my neighbor down the street. That's my, my, you know, my housekeeper. Um, and then, and then it just, that's the reason why it blew up because we just put real people in the, in the infomercials and real people responded and it exploded. And it did become the biggest thing ever, you know, since anything Jack LaLanne, Jack LaLanne's even done. So, it truly has um, and done. We've, tried to, we've tried to keep that model. Maybe you, you know, need to do that, Lee. If you make a video like Tony, you'd stutter, you'd say pup, 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 pull ups or something like that. You yeah, get more like people that. to buy it or something. I like, like that. And it's nice to work something out. Something making make myself look more normal. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, perfect. Yeah, I yeah. look pretty normal as it is. <laughs> Tony, uh, you know, speaking of the impact you've made in, on, on all of your potential or all of your current clients, you know, it sounds like the first workout was an hour. Then you mentioned something about the 22 minute, and it sounds like you've obviously decreased the time. Is that something that was a, a cognitive conscious decision to decrease the amount of time that your programs are, are offered? I, you know, I think when we were, we were just starting out, our main goal was just to try to see how, how fit we could get a very finite group of people who were struggling at the gym. You know, so they were, you know, whatever, maybe they were ex-athletes or they had 10, 15, 20 pounds to lose and they would keep going to the gym and, you know, maybe they could afford a trainer or they couldn't, but they would walk in there and go, okay, what's that machine doing? What does that one do? How long am I supposed to do here? And how many reps is this? And, you know, what, what should I put on the weight stack? You know, people were just mystified the average, you know, we were just kind of catering to people going to the gym that weren't really getting the results. And then if you, P90X, I mean, people who had 200 pounds to lose were buying it and, you know, and, and, uh, uh, you know, people who, with prosthetics were buying it. And, and uh, it just became this phenomenon above and beyond anything we ever expected. But even, even with, the, with the level of popularity that was, that was with P90X, which was my biggest hit, our success rate was relatively low. You know, I mean, if we, you know, I don't know what the numbers were, 12 to 25% who bought it, and I don't know how they figured this stuff out, who bought it would open up the box, start on day one and not miss a day. Most people would, you know, they get through this first week, they get to apply metrics and go, okay, I'm out. You know what I mean? That's it, you know, sorry. Um, and then they would come back four months later and try again and try again. A lot of our, if you look at a lot of people in the infomercial, it was their fourth and fifth attempt, you know, where they would see other people get through it and they go, man, you know, what, what am I, why am I bagging this on this thing two weeks in, two months in? You know, and so the reason why we shortened some of them was just we wanted the success rate to go up. So if you look at P90X3, um, they're a half an hour. And so as opposed to 24 sets of, of exercises, we cut it down to about 16 to 18 and we jammed them in a, in a 30 minute time frame. And so our success rate went up, you know, and, and you know, when you're honing the diet and you're, and you're creating sequences for people where they're burning more calories, they're doing, you know, combinations of resistance and cardio type moves at the same time, you're throwing in burpees, you know, you're doing like a, a lunge, back bend, handstand, pull up, push up, back flip, you know, I'm exaggerating, of course. But when you add combinations of different kinds of moves, which are really what you're doing out in the real world, you know what I mean? You're, you know, you're running around and you're not just doing very linear type exercises. You're doing, you know, you're twisting and you're turning and you're moving up and down and you're squatting to pick, pick stuff up and you're reaching up on the shelf. So we wanted to create the type of movements in sequences so it would emulate what people normally do. And so we could cut it down to a half an hour and a lot more people finished, you know, and a lot more people got the kind of results they were expecting. 22 minute hardcore is 
you know, uh, it's a military based on a lot of my travels around the world, you know, talking to, people, to a lot of the military folks, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, they've got to take these PT tests once or twice a year, you know, and not everybody's out in the field. They got desk jobs, you know what I mean? And so whether you've got a desk job or you're, you know, you're deployed, um, you still have to pass these PT tests. And so they would always be cramming in the last month, you know, killing themselves to try to lose weight and barely get by. And I wanted to help them and I wanted to kind of help help the average person who says they support the troops to begin to use this program so they become they can become not only somebody who understands what they have to go through our military has to go through but to have that experience themselves have a version of that experience themselves and become less of a burden on the healthcare crisis i mean if you look at the what's going on with so many people in this country you know there was no healthcare crisis when i was a kid everybody was relatively you know maybe they weren't ripped or fit or super fit or athletic but they weren't overweight like we are now and so I figured, hey, man, if you can't do 22 minutes, you just don't care. You know what I mean? You've just given up. All right. I mean, I got one called 10 Minute Trainer. Okay, if you can't do 10 Minute Trainer, just go buy a bag of, of, of M&Ms and go to town, you know, and a couple of a couple of Cokes. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to help as many people as I can. You know, not, not all, uh, uh, all sizes don't fit all people. And so, you know, hey, look, if you're a busy mom with three kids, P90X is probably not for you, even though there have been a lot of moms that have done it, but maybe 10 minute trainer or 22 minute hardcore. My wife did 22 minute hardcore all the way through, got her best results with that program um, uh, because it didn't require a lot of stuff, a lot of equipment, you know what I mean? You could do pull-ups, but you had options where you didn't need them. Um, you know, a lot of burpees, hello, get up, get burpees, down. A lot of burpees. You know what I mean? So, uh, which is a, you know, uh, a great, a great exercise just to get the heart rate up and do a little resistance at the same time. So, you know, the idea here is to, you know, continuing, continuing to reinvent the wheel, trying to tap into more people, help more people. And that's what I've been able to do so far anyway. You know, a lot of entrepreneurs that may be listening to the show today, maybe they built a successful product and they, they've sold it to their clients. But, you know, you've been very successful at being able to sell multiple versions of products or having the cross pollinization to sell other products. How, how would you talk to entrepreneurs that are trying to really grow their business about how to get deeper from that segmentation perspective and trying to do more for your clients or to offer more services to your clients once you once you offer them something once? I think being an entrepreneur is no different than somebody who's trying to start an exercise routine. You know what I mean? You've got to jump into something that you really are passionate about, something that you know that you can you can kind of see through no matter how many times you fall down. You know, there's got to be a real love for it, a real passion for it, a real de de determination to, you know, plan, uh, uh, work with the right kind of people, you know, surround yourself with the right kind of folks. Um, you know, I've signed on to some things that I thought were really cool, maybe making me a few bucks, but I didn't fall madly in love with them. And so it kind of petered out, you know, for right. a myriad, myriad of reasons. You know, you know, right now I'm working with a water filtration company called AquaTrue and, you know, hydration is one of the most critical aspects of, you know, staying fit and being healthy. And so, you know, you look at the, the most important things, it's, it's nutrition, proper nutrition, it's, it's hydration and it's, it's, uh, you know, getting a decent amount of sleep and keeping your stress under control. I mean, if you get those, if you can do those four things then probably you're going to be pretty successful. Most folks don't understand that there's, you know, there's a, a giant, um, garbage patch out in the Pacific, the size of the state of Rhode Island, that is, you know, this undecomposed plastic crap that's sitting out there. And so I'm just trying to get people to get off the of water bottles. And if you look at what's going on in Flint, Michigan, and parts of Kentucky and all over this country, you know, what's coming out of your tap isn't necessarily the best thing in the world. There's lead in there, there's fluoride in there, there's chlorine in there, there's medical waste in there. And, you know, so, you know, this is something that I'm passionate about. So it's really you know, this is something I can stick with. You know, I was doing something with insoles once that wasn't really my passion. I go, all right, Tony, if you sell X amount of insoles in a month, you know, it's like after a while, I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm making like 45 cents an insole, you know. So I would say the first and foremost is, you know, think outside of the box and jump into something you truly love and be willing to put, you know, a couple of years into it because it takes a lot of time to kind of uh, get get things going the way you'd like them to go. Well, we're sitting here on the Shrimp Tank today in the Shrimp Tank Studios in Atlanta, Georgia, talking to Tony Horton today, who's, of course, the popular creator of the best-selling series P90X and much, much more. Uh, really awesome to be able to talk to him today. We're going to take a quick break from our sponsors, and when we come back, we're going to get into our hot or not section, and we're going to find out in just a minute. Vitamins, hot or not, Tony will tell us when we come back on the Shrimp Tank. Well, thank you, Jimmy. You can always get a color and pepper dust when you buy from Jim Ellis. It's in honor of Chris Hanks. I love that. It's yes. great. There's like 76 versions of white if you want to go to Sherwin-Williams today. 
and uh, get some paint in your house. And of course, we're on the shrimp tank today. I'm your host, Ted Jenkins, sitting here with my co-host, Lee Heisman, today. And of course, Kennesaw State, always in our mind. But we have our brilliant entrepreneur and CEO today, Tony Horton, who, again, is the creator of the amazing series P90X, P90X2, 3, uh, so much more I saw soon. I want to talk about it today, the Omega Workshop and other stuff that's coming up uh, that he's doing, which is amazing stuff. But we get to our Hot or Not section today, and uh, we want to talk about Hot or Not. And one of the ones I was thinking about, Tony, before we did this interview today is that I grew up on the East Coast as well uh, in the 70s, and uh, people just didn't really exercise then. You're right. You said it earlier in the first segment that it was Jack Lane and maybe a bad dining room chair that people would uh, use for working out, but I could never even imagine in my mind that my parents would have said to me, Ted, uh, I'm leaving now to go see the personal trainer. I just, I could not imagine that in 1976 that somebody would have said that. And, and yet today, I think it's become an important part of people's lives. So my first hot or not is that whether people use a P90X and they, they do it at home or they can hire a personal trainer. Is, is it a good idea to get somebody on your side as an advocate when it comes to your fitness? Well, if you're having accountability issues and you're, you're, you know, you're not being consistent with this, I mean, obviously, you know, you've got to be able to really want it. You know, you've got to be able to want to lose the weight. You want to learn to, you want to have, you want to begin to, uh, exercise on a regular basis. It can't be done, you know, willy nilly. It's it's not a two to three day a week equation. It's got to be minimum four days a week. And if you really want to see results and change, it's got to be five and six days a week. I work out six days a week, sometimes seven. I mean, I think it's going to turn out this week. I'm going to work out seven. So, based on a you know a, a class that I'm going to take that I normally don't take. So. Um, you know, you need accountability, a purpose, and a plan. And if you don't have those three things, then you don't have a shot. You know, so accountability comes in the form of having a trainer and having a gym membership and making sure that you make those appointments and you go hang out with that person and you've got to like them. You know what I mean? Uh, hopefully they're smart enough and good enough that uh, they're going to give you enough variety so you're going to get those kind of results. Any good trainer would force you to do things that you don't want to do. But if they're any good, they will show you the modifications uh, along the way so that you get the actual results that you want. And then, you know, your purpose should be something that is not based on your ego and your, you know, your glory days of the past or your expectations of the future or what you what you hope people will say when you look better, because that is such a, you know, such a, a, a sad way to go about it. You know, I mean, I, I, I tell people like, you know, you said at the top of the show, train today because you're better today. You know, I mean, you're going to release an norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, brain drive, neurotropic factor. If you move today, which means that's going to improve not only the physical, because the physical comes later, 30, 60, 90 days, 120 days. Oh, it's, P it's P90X, and I don't look as good as I do after 90 days. Oh, that didn't work. Do another 30. Do another 30. <laughs> you know, it's like everybody's <laughs> waiting around for this after picture so they can show it to their friends. And right. then, you know, t 10 weeks later, they're fat again. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, if you want to feel energized, if you want to feel good, if you want to be productive, if you want to have energy, if you don't want to have joint pain, if you want to improve your sex drive with lot without little blue pills, boys, <laughs> then move your ass. I mean, that's it. I wish there was something else I could tell you. I wish right. there was some kind of magic pill. But, you know, in, in the beginning, it's hard. It's always hard. Transformation is hard. When you quit smoking, it's hard. When you're trying to stop drinking, it's hard. When you're trying to get off the sugar, it's hard. When you're trying to start the exercise, it's hard. But after a while, it gets easier and easier and easier. And you, you all of a sudden, you look at yourself and go, gosh, where do these guns come from? Wow, where did the six cat? pack come from oh you know what i think i want to go for a hike i think i want to go for a bike ride i think i want to go climb kilimanjaro you know all of a sudden your world opens up to these experiences that you would never ever have if you don't figure out how to be accountable have a purpose and have the accountability that you need to be able to get. i was getting worried during this interview there's a bunch of people moving into your house okay. <laughs> yeah man my, my house is constantly under construction some people i got audio out. visual i got my housekeepers i thought i saw a whole tv room got all set up in there you know, yeah they're, man they're, they're yeah. Stairwork. <laughs> i saw some studio people. went in the last five minutes unbelievable so tony i'm gonna upset a lot of people here and, and again i'm already i'm a tony fan no question about it tony you know you've sold millions millions of copies of your program and we joke in our producer Producer Trey had even mentioned it earlier is, you know, what does it feel like when you probably have over 4 million people cursing your name at the end of a workout, right? What is that energy <laughs> when you know someone has worked real hard and, oh, that Tony guy who made me do this? So that's the first question. But before I jump into that, I need to know hot or not. And I think this is going to upset a lot of people. Coffee and protein bars. 
Well, you know, hot or not really depends on the individual. You know what I mean? If you're a 25-year-old gymnast uh, and you're a 55-year-old construction worker, I don't know. You know what I mean? It really depends on you. I mean, for it, you, Tony, do you drink coffee? Oh, for me? I yes. don't drink coffee. I never have. I know. That's why I'm asking. I'm asking. Tony Horton does not drink you, coffee and protein I, bars. I, well, I do have protein bars occasionally. I use protein bars as emergency-only food, you know, because I don't want to – I don't want to get hangry. You know what I'm saying? Abs. Oh, I know what you're saying. I'm married. <laughs> I know what you're saying. My wife, you know I, she has a shirt that says hangry. I Absolutely. Eat this. But you tell me I mean? about the coffee because that is one of the most popular liquids on our planet. Why don't you do coffee? You know, I don't like, I don't, uh, it was funny because even through college, you know, when I was tr trying to get through exams and stuff like that, I never use it as a means to sort of keep myself up and keep going. And I loved the, the taste even when I, when I had it occasionally. I never really fell into it. I would get a little jittery. I didn't like that feeling. I, I'd like to be able to control how I feel. So I don't use substances outside of myself to alter my, my state. There is stuff going on in my house up there. <laughs> Good God, y'all, dude. I'm on an interview here, man. You got to keep it down. Um, so, uh, yeah. Sorry, girls. Um, you know, it's like with alcohol. I stopped drinking about 25 years ago. I just, you know, I, I, I'm... I'm already pretty wired as it is. I'm already pretty amped. I'm, I have a lot of energy off, off, off uh, you know, just out of bed most days. So I just never fell into it. I'll have some green tea once in a while, maybe, or, you know, I'll have a pre-workout thing with some, you know, a few milligrams of caffeine in it. But um, I just don't, I, I just want to be as authentic and as real and as honest with food and, and some simple supplements uh, that kind of allow me to, to heal up you know, after hard workouts and, and recover for, uh, for the next one. And well, you, so, you mentioned that um, in this, the hot or not, I put it into the break in here that I thought I, I thought I saw an interview somewhere where you said you could take up to 50 vitamins a day. And I wasn't sure if that's a hot or not or vitamins and should people go to the store and, and use them? You show me a collegiate or prep professional athlete um, that doesn't take some kind of supplement. There's just no such person. You know, unless, you know, unless you live on the hill within the forest and you're and you meditate and you're a monk <laughs> and you grow your own vegetables and you kill your own chickens, you know what I mean? And you have no family because, you know, are you never in traffic or there's, you know, your boss is the most awesome human world person in the world. And they just tell you how you, you know, there's too much stress and strife and environmental issues. There's too many, there's too many outside forces um, whether they be genetic, environmental, or behavioral, that make it very difficult for people to exercise hard six days a week without taking something to help their body heal. You know, supplements are, you know, just like it says, it supplements your regular diet. So, you know, most people are not eating the best meals. They're not being consistent with their meals. They're not so hydrating true. like they should be. They're not getting enough uh, uh, rest at night. And so supplements fill in the gaps. I mean, if you look at jo Jack LaLanne, I mean, I'm I'm good friends with Elaine Lelane, his, his wife. She's 93, oh. and we were on stage. I got the Jack Lelane Award um, a couple of years back, and we were doing push-ups together. And she walks the walk and talks the talk. I mean, you know, she. I just take handfuls in the morning and handfuls at night, and and I drink, you know, I drink a product called Shakeology, which is something that Beachbody yeah. does. There's a performance line. There's bef there's, there's pre-workout formulas and post-workout formulas because there's aches and pains and fatigue and muscle stress that you know that your kale salad ain't gonna help you with man. <laughs> tony i i couldn't have paid you to say that my wife is listening on the show and she's 12 years my junior and i take a handful hey of now. supplements she is hey yeah she i take a handful <laughs> of supplements in the morning and in the evening and she picks on me all the time she's like what is wrong with you and honey if you're listening right now mr horton does the same thing so tony hot or not and i, I think i know the answer to this and and i know we've been talking a lot about your exercise program and you've been speaking about it but being in fitness myself, not anywhere near your level, but being in fitness myself, is it hot or not for food prepping to be successful? Again, you know, it really depends on the individual. Some folks without food prep would never succeed. They would be all over the place, you know. So I know folks that'll spend an entire Sunday, man, with, you know, 14, uh, 14 buckets of Tupperware, uh, getting their breakfast, getting their lunch, getting their dinner. You know what I mean? It's all formulated. If you look at right now, what's really popular food kits, you know, there's, especially yeah. here in LA and all over the country, you look at major metropolitan cities, there are, there are food delivery companies all over. Some of them frozen, some of them are, are, are heat and eat. You know, I met with a company called Chef yesterday. Um, I like them because you can order one meal or two weeks worth of meals. You get to individually pick the meal that you want. A lot of, you know, home delivery food stuff 
just comes. It's like, oh, wow, what is this? You know, I don't like eggs like that, or I don't want, you know. And so they, they'll just send you whatever based on calories and the certain kinds of foods that you don't want to eat, but you're not necessarily, you know, you go to a restaurant, you don't just eat what they give you. You get to pick, you know what I mean? What you want to eat. And that's why I like Chef, for example. Um, and so just people are trying to make it easier and more convenient. And, and, and what that does is it prevents them from cheating more often. You know, and food prep exactly. is one way for some people on a budget to be able to, to do that. You know, they'll just make it, they'll stick it in the freezer in the fridge, and there it is. They'll microwave it or steam oven it or, th or throw it in the convention oven, or, uh, and, and that's just one way to do it. So it's, it's hotter than ever, um, where it didn't even exist maybe five, ten years ago. Well, folks, this is the, uh, the advice of not just somebody who just trains every once in a while. This is literally probably the best trainer. Are you the, are the best trainer, I would say, in the country? <laughs> I wouldn't even know. You know, there's a lot of people who would like to say they are that person. I, I've had a certain level of success where some people would think so. Um, there's other folks out there that are having pretty good success too. And if I actually answered that question, yes. Oh my gosh, the oh, grief that the I would, war yes. would start from here. We're this, take a oh break. man. Well, Horton thinks he's the best one. Does he? Well, let I me. Mean, we're going to take know, a quick I'll, break. Like, I'll go to the airport and some guy, I'll challenge you in push-up contests or arm wrestling. I mean, oh, I'll Lee get the snot do that. beat out of me. You want to do a pull-up on my arm uh, right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. He has to hold his arm up. We'll try that. Well, I know that pull-ups are Tony Horton's favorite exercise. We want to talk about that when we get to the Plead the Fifth section. We're going to take a quick break from our sponsors. When we get back in the Plead the Fifth, we'll ask Tony some tough questions in our rapid-fire round. I do want to find out. I'm going to let him think about this during the quick break in here. Did he ever meet... Tony Little and is the guy's ponytail real? I want to know that right when we come back on the Shrimp Tank. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Shrimp Tank. I'm your host, Ted Jenkins. Sitting here with my co-host, Lee Heisman. And as always, you can hear a replay of all of our broadcasts. And listen, if you don't download this episode this week from Tony Horton, you think you're a successful entrepreneur? Talk about selling your product to millions of people. Talk about helping millions of people and helping them find their purpose and transform their lives. If you're looking to do that in your business, which we all should, Tony Horton has done it and done it as successfully as any entrepreneur in America. And as always, you'll be able to see our post-show wrap-up on YouTube, but uh, check out the whole broadcast at shrimptankpodcast.com. And as we always do on the Shrimp Tank, we get into our third and final segment today, which is our Plead the Fifth section. Lee has a stellar track record of getting our guests to plead the fifth. But Tony doesn't know you can plead the fifth, Tony, in our rules here. You plead the fifth one time. If you make it through, hats off, you get a shrimp, and we'll be sending you a squeezable shrimp at that point. So you're allowed to plead the fifth one time, and we keep There's track nothing of like it. having a squeezable shrimp at home, is there? I have Just, many. It, I have many. I have a whole bowl of them. A <laughs> bowl of shrimp, shrimps at home. But I, I just tease this up before the break because I can say this. Tony doesn't have to say this, but my least favorite. Of all the people that I've seen on television in the infomercial world, I don't know. Ron Ronco is close. But my least favorite is Tony Little because every time I see on the gazelle, you can do it. <laughs> and I just wondered, the plea the fifth is, you know, <clears throat> did that product, was that actually really a very successful product? Did he actually do well with that? Yeah, the gazelle did very well for a while. I mean, there was something about the way they shot that show and his level of energy, um, and it did phenomenally well. I, I mean, I don't know how many of those things were at the bottom of people's driveway. Oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. But, but uh, yeah, for, you know, I mean, I will not plead the fifth, but I will tell you this. <laughs> yes. It got a lot of people off their butt. You know it did, I mean? it, right, it right. got a lot of people moving, and, you know, it was an arms and legs tool. Um, it was somewhat myopic in the fact that it was, you know, you couldn't do crunches on it. You couldn't do push-ups or pull-ups. It was really sort of one one movement but if it got people moving and they lost some weight in the process and and they were breathing heavy and there was some calories burned then you know you can't argue with that yeah. so tony you know you have worked in the celebrity world not only the celebrities you spoke of or even professional athletes so you're working in a world where a lot of these people and their agents and the studios need certain results no names we're not looking for names but tell us your your strangest story or the strangest incident that you can't look this person in the eye during the training session. You know, tell us the strangest story that you've experienced working in this extreme environment with some of your clients. Oh my God. No oh names. I'm not looking for names. We, we okay, let's just say this. Let's just say, well, this is a true story. I was working with a, a, a rock and roll. I can't tell you how excited I am because you didn't even hesitate. This, just to let you know, it wasn't could, as though you had to ponder. I could, I could write a thousand page book on just the years of working with 
my rock and roll clients. So it was one rock and roll client. And uh, we had a routine where, you know, I would, uh, I'd hit the code on the gate and the gate would open up. And uh, if he wasn't already in a gym, they were in two separate buildings. So his house was in one spot and the gym was in another. His gym and studio were in the same place. And if I, you know, if he wasn't there, I would go back to the house, knock on the door and get him up, wake him up. It was, you know, fairly early in the morning. And on this particular day, I'm going to get in so much trouble right now. Here we go. <laughs> um, you know, he was rock and roll mate you know what i mean <laughs> right and there was a very lovely very naked girl who answered the door and uh so you know are you here to see billy are you the trainer yes okay would you like to come in okay i'm coming in <laughs> and uh you know it was really lovely i'm having a conversation in the kitchen with this girl talking about you know how to work your triceps and she's naked you know? and so you know then i could see i could look down the hallway because she couldn't see him you know i was looking down the hallway and he's coming down the hallway like right my bro can you believe it roll the road you know? and uh he's going all right sally we're gonna go train now you know and so i looked at him and i went dude your life holy smokes you know but uh that's just one and that's kind of a there's more oh my uh, i Lord. like that so uh many more, many more. plead the fifth in here i know that uh like i said before the break that pull-ups is your your favorite exercise how many pull-ups do you think is the most you ever did at one session do you know you have any idea well i went to a marine corps base and there was a staff sergeant there who was a bit of a badass and he knew i was coming you know we planned this about a month and a ahead and he said hey look you know i want to take you on a and he never, he never lost anything. I mean, this guy never, apparently, he was such a <laughs> maniac, you know what I mean? He would come, he'd, like, he'd just walk up to anybody, secretaries, let's do it right now, push-ups, I can beat you, you know? He was, he was intense. I mean, he was perfect. Like, you, glad you're on my side, bro. <laughs> and uh, we went there, and we did a pull-up contest, and he did, um, he did 37 in a row, oh. which is pretty good. He went first. <clears throat> I did, he did 37, I did 38. Oh. Oh, hold on, hold on, Tony, how many could you have done? 38. Okay, fair. <laughs> yeah, man. I wasn't sure I mean, if you stopped right at 38. Not no, I mean, you know, I mean, I, maybe I could have muscled out a, a few more, but they would have been ugly. I mean, it would have been nice to get to 40. Um, I can knock out, you know, I can knock out uh, 18, 20, 25 relatively easily. And I, every time I go to any base, it's always, hey, man, pull ups. So there was a kid at, uh, uh, gosh, what was the Air Force base in Utah, um, Air Force National Guard, 22 year old. He did about 32. I did 35. So, you know, and whatever number you did, I'll do a couple this? more. How long ago? And then I, what's that? How long ago was this? Um, um, the, the first one was about six years ago, and the last one was a couple years so ago. So let's just be crystal clear for our audience listening. So remember what he said. First was the gentleman in the military. I don't know his age. You mentioned a 22-year-old. You're 59 now. You were 53 back then, correct? Mm -hmm. So not only did this happen, it also happened at 53. That's sick. Uh, what's sick is this man next to me also, Tony, Ted works out like a machine. I've tried to get up early in the morning and get down to where he is. That's your least favorite workout is the pull-ups. Uh, the least. The pull-ups are so hard. It's, it's such a tough exercise. It's his least favorite workout, no question. It, it's everything. You know, it's like anything else, you know, the more you do, the better you get, right? Yeah. So if you're not good at pull-ups, you got to do more pull-ups. If you're not good at yoga, you got to do more yoga. You know, if you're not good at driving your car, you better learn. You got to get out and drive your car more. I mean, it's just simple <laughs> stuff. You know, I mean, I, I was on a base. Well, another one is because uh, you know, I'm, I mean, this is the sequence where I pat myself on the back while I tell you how awesome I am. But but uh, you know, we did a, a contest at a, at a base out in um, Nevada, and uh, this you know this kid said I want to do a push-up contest. And in PT, it's maximum push-ups in a minute, and he did 77 which is a hell of a lot of push-ups. Wow. Wow. I did 87. Yeah. <laughs> and you can go on YouTube and see it. It's pretty cool. Oh, I, don't, I, I couldn't do 87 now. I, don't, I couldn't. I don't That's think not I can just a win. That's a crush. I think we're yeah, going to edit kind of crushed that in. We're going to edit good. that YouTube slice in there. So, Tony, I will tell you, as I mentioned earlier, turning 47 this year, what I hear, and you know this, at our age level and, and you're a little older, you, you kind of can tell you are who you are. You're not going to change at this point. You are the person you are. And I've also heard that about myself from friends is my energy level, my passion, my personality. It's just in their face in a positive way. Uh, you seem like me on drugs. It's amazing. You seem twice as energetic, <laughs> twice as passionate. <laughs> Blows me away. Tony, when did, <laughs> if you could see the camera, our audience can't see Tony, but he's, he's hysterical. Tony, when do you get upset and what upsets you and brings you down? And then in turn, what do you do to get out of that funk? Whoa. And also, yeah, I think feel what, free to plead the fifth if you want to give no, it man, No, man, I was no like pleading. I, I was a comic, man. I, used, I did, yeah. did X-rated mime on stage, you know what I mean? So there's no, you're going you're gonna to have to dig down pretty yeah, this deep. This competitive man, we're not getting him to plead the fifth. I no. already know that. Um, Go ahead. I, I don't like people who don't, who don't do what they say they're going to do. 
not just, you know, I mean, like, you know, if you and I are doing a deal or you're, you know, yeah. I, I like, uh, I like uh-huh. honesty, truth, and authenticity. That's kind of what I thrive on. I mean, I, I used to be a, can I swear on this show? Yeah, I, yeah, whatever Absolutely. You I, I was a bullshitter as a kid. I mean, I just made yeah. things up because it made me feel good and it, it propped me up. And I think too many people are just full of crap, you know, and, uh, they live some kind of shadow version of who they are as opposed to an authentic version of who they are. And that's most people, you know, I mean, you know, you want to be a fly in the wall in somebody's house and you go, ah, oh my God, you're a nutbag. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, what so, do you, you do know, to I, get out of that funk? If you see it happen, what do you um, do I exercise, I exercise. Um, and I do this breathing sequence that helps me quite a bit. It's just 30 deep breaths. I mean, it's kind of like meditation, but it's not. It just forces me to slow down and to be quiet and to sit in one place. And it takes usually 30 deep breaths on average. Sometimes I can get it in 10 and sometimes I got to do 50. I like it. I'm going to start using 30, that. 30 times, man. It'll, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, count down from 10, whatever it is. There's different ways. You just have to, to stop, you know, and, and I'm, you know, I've done personal development. My whole career started based on reading Andrew Weil books and Deepak Chopra and Tony Robbins and Richard oh, yeah. Carlson and, and Gary Zukoff and, uh, and, uh, you know, reading books like The Magic Lamp and, and these different things that kind of rewired my brain so that I would be more productive and less of a procrastinator and not not hang on on things and hold on to things for so long and be upset by falling down. You know, I, I'm not attached to the outcome anymore yeah. and I don't care what people think and um, and I don't hold grudges. You know, and I don't I don't you know, if something goes bad, I don't kick people out of my life. You know, maybe I will for a couple of weeks, but then I. I'll say, okay, let me reevaluate this situation because the, what happens to a lot of people is they end up with, you know, in our age, 40 to 50, they end up with early onset curmudgeon disorder, you know, yeah. <laughs> and they become, they were these optimistic, upbeat, enthusiastic kids with tons of energy. And then you just become, you know, churlish, churlish curmudgeons, you know, that. and it's because they, they had these experiences that didn't go the way they wanted because their expectations were so high and it didn't turn out the way they wanted to. And hello, that's life. You know, um, and so you just, you know, you suck it up and you push it away and you open up a new door and, and, and then, you know, you might fall down again. But so what? And that's the only reason why I'm successful is because I, you know, I I surround myself with funny, smart, cool people who aren't, you know, wannabes and 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 drag or drag me down. And um, and I do things that I love and uh, and I have a great wife and um you Sean, know, and I Sean, think of, she's pretty awesome, by the way. Donna's pretty. Awesome. She's ridiculous. She's, she's a unicorn, full blown way. unicorn. OK, <laughs> unicorn. I'm doing my Trump now. Hello, unicorn. Amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just got lucky there. But I didn't you know, I've, I've only been married a couple of years and I'm 59. I waited a long time. So it was worth the wait. Well, one last question here as we wrap up the shrimp tank, you know, technology is changing a lot of things in this world. And I'm wondering in the next 20 years, the next 10 years, uh, obviously with things like Peloton now, there's a lot of change in the fitness business. How do you see technology changing your business and how will you evolve as, as uh, you know, technology evolves? Well, you know, look how it's changed since I started. I mean, back in the day, you know, there was no such thing, you know, nobody had trainers, nobody was had nutritionists, nobody had endocrinologists, nobody had masseuses, you know, there was no. none of those types of things. So and that's not really technology so much, but it is people educating themselves to techniques to help them be more successful more often. Um, but if you look at the, the way I would deliver my programs, I mean, they were on half inch tape, which you used to put in the VHS, yeah. you know what I mean? And then there were the DVDs, right? And then you had that, which was slightly more convenient. And now everything is streaming. I mean, if you look at where, you know, you, if you wanted to buy one of my programs, you had to pick up the phone, talk to somebody in another country and try not to be upsold by a, a bunch of stuff you didn't need. And then you would wait five, six, seven days for it to show up to your house. And you'd have to open up the package and you have to put it in the machine. And then you have to get through the warnings. And now you just, you go online and go, I want Tony Horton now. You know what I mean? And we've got something called uh, Beach Body on Demand, which is a streaming service. So if you want to work out, you know, in 10 minutes, you can. And it's and all you need is a phone or a laptop or, you know, a smart TV or something, and you're good to go. So that technology will continue to grow. And eventually, it'll just be, you know, a little slot in your forehead. And you just stick it in there. <laughs> right. The down. USB drive in the side of well, my head. We all watch yes. Black Mirror, so we're very familiar right with what's my coming. Ears, exactly right. correct. So uh, not that we need the uh, shameless plug, but uh, this is a fantastic interview today. And I appreciate you spending the time for our entrepreneurs across the country. For folks that want to learn more about uh, the Omega Workshop and all of your series and much, much more, how can they get in touch, uh, learn more about your company and uh, get started today, transform today? 
Well, you know, um, I'm probably your audience can't see it, but you see this beautiful shirt. It says TH Life on the back. It says do your best to forget the rest. So I have a t-shirt company um, with some fun sayings. Uh, uh, they're well made. They're well constructed. Uh, they hold up a long time. And so if you want to get the t-shirts, if you want a TH Care, which is my skin and hair care line, uh, if you want to know about the Omega Institute in upstate New York, which is uh, at the end of August, which is an annual event, it's the seventh year in a row. It maxes out at 100 people, so it's really an intimate event. It's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday event. And it's a beautiful location up in Omega. Everything and anything you ever wanted to know about where I'm going, what I'm doing, what I'm selling, you go to TonyHortonLife.com. That's TonyHortonLife. <laughs> dot com <laughs> very cool stuff well thanks so much for coming on the uh, shrimp tank today stick around we'll do a quick post show wrap up and folks thanks as always for tuning into the shrimp tank learn these lessons today the biggest thing that i took away folks you want to be successful as an entrepreneur be authentic be yourself it will all work out and uh, people will feel your passion and you can transform your business and much much more every week right here on the shrimp tank I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank Big fish, small pond